This is the Finesse Media Podcast. You don't need to be perfect. You need to be imperfectly perfect and beautifully human. And that's what's going to resonate when you give your killer pitch or your perfect pitch. It's not about perfection. It's about relating to others in a different way and in a unique way. And you want to be able to stand out. I don't ever want to fit in. And I don't want my clients to feel like they have to be average, random, or ordinary. Hence why it's all about the killer elevator pitch, media pitch, and investor pitch. <laughs> well, we about to get ready then, and we are about to end almost the year of 2022. And I am welcoming you, welcoming you back to another episode of the Finesse Media Podcast, Season Five. I'm your host, Ken Finesse Media, and I miss, as I mentioned to you, I'm bringing you something brand new every week. And this week, I got someone brand new. So she is a third time, thirteen time winning um, champion for pitching uh, everything from all sorts of brands and companies she's partnered with. I am so happy to introduce this lady to the podcast and also introduce her to my audience and to you all. Welcome to the podcast for the first time, Precious, the Killer Pitch Master Williams. What's up, lady? What's good? I love the way you intro. Let's go. Listen, right before we started, they got a big um, uh, uh, rollout of who you were already. So I didn't want to say too much. They already saw you know who you were from the clip we just shown. But listen, lady. You are a third time, thirteen time winning pitch master queen. You recently just—I was going to hold it to the end, but I don't want to forget <laughs> it. You just won, Miss Lady, the Women's Business Award for 2022. Toast to that! I mean, oh, congratulations. I didn't prepare you to toast. Water is always good. H2O is good, but killer pitch master. Listen, welcome to the podcast, Queen. Thank you for having me. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. That's Listen, why you're going to be speaker of the year uh, or year. even be in the finals for speaker of the year. So to be, you should be the first runner up. I can't get no better than that. I'm with yeah. it. And you may have seen um, Precious Williams on this, as I'm sure in the background, we had the uh, celebration of authors. Uh, shout out to Sharon Monet. She held that you down early part like, of the year. Like and I would tell you, listen, without any script here, listen, when I first seen you here, and this is something I, I kind of curated and also hosted, but Precious, when I've seen you on here, that's not a lot of people that impress me. I'll be honest with you. When it comes to the energy, I'm bringing this every week, but this is also who I am in, am in my day life. People who know me from my alma mater and from high school and years beyond know I bring energy, but that's not a lot of people, Precious, that really, really impress me like that and has the energy that I have and I think beyond that man when did this all start but you still got to learn some lessons so what lessons have you learned while working with Penn Legacy my first lesson in working with Sharon Monet and Penn Legacy hashtag Penn Legacy for life <laughs> Sharon put some Sharon told me how to put respect on my name and make sure others put respect on my name when I came to working with Sharon, honestly, I should tell you this: the truth is, I wasn't too, 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 too long removed from being homeless and an alcoholic. Right? I had a big life before, and people know that I had a very big life, Shark Tank, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but when we were on that phone, and I never forget, she wrote a story on me for CNN in 2015. I was Entrepreneur of the Month for my former company. And, you know, I'm just talking to her. You know, a lot of people can't, oh, you know, we got people publish a book. I'm like, I ain't just trying to publish no book. First of all, I, I, there was no respect on my name. People, you know, when you become homeless and everything, people don't want to associate with you. So I had given up on my dreams. And so when Charlotte said what you said, I said, oh, no, she showed me how to put some respect on my name. And yeah. so, you know, and she told me I had two and a half months to write my book. And I'm going to tell y'all, not too many people check me. I, I want her to check me. I look for her to check me, right? And she'll tell you, I, I look for it. I'd be like, I'm not going to fight with her. That's a woman who knows what she's doing. We'll you get know, into the picture, really, but I, I want I, honestly, people to know Precious, and I want to know Precious. Well, I've been speaking since I was 16 years old. I'm 43, so that's 27 years. But I think this, the energy you're feeling and most people are feeling so much more now is because I mask off. I'm not, I am a former attorney. So, you know, I did carry myself a, a certain way and I had to 
you know, be very conservative and very soft-spoken, but this was the real me all along. Yeah. And I didn't think that people could really accept me, right? I am black on both sides, no Brazilian butt lift, no six pack abs, full figure D for taking the business world by storm. Before people have seen Lizzo, before people have seen Ashley Graham on a couple of Sports Illustrated. And when I started my first company, no one believed in it. Too fat, wow. too black, no Ivy League degree. And I'm like, oh, that's not like a challenge. Yeah, I'm gonna well, show me states. So this look like I'm about to show you what time it is. And that's so what's up. when I started pitching, that's when this started to come out. And I smoked all competition, whether you went to Harvard, Yale, Stanford, Columbia, cool tech companies, or international companies. So it literally came from my back was against the wall. Mm. I had no money to start my company, was leaving the law behind, and I needed to come out with firepower. And it just so happened that the world was ready for Precious Williams. Yeah. And like you say, you're from the show me state. So when they were ready for Precious Williams, you came in like a pitch queen. As you mentioned, we're getting to the book. Shout out to the book, The Pitch Queen. I don't the know if you got queen. it right. The, the yes. Pitch Queen is, is, is also hot. But as you mentioned, you're from the show me state. And you also said that a lady coming from college. So you're also a Spelman grad. So shout out to that as well. Well, HBCU yes. alumni, those that know each and every week on the podcast, I highlight a new HBCU of the week. And I'm no secret, Spellman is also the HBCU of this week. So thank you, Spellman, for what you've done and continue to do for our ladies throughout the country and America. But doing being at Spellman and also a member of Delta Sigma Theta, Sorority Incorporated. So what was that like being on Spellman campus? Did you know also at that time? I mean, you said at 13, but I mean... Oh, early on that you had this talent, but while at Spelman, I mean, what was that, you know, energy like? How did people receive you then? Or what were you like at a, as a student? Well, when before I went off to Spelman, there were so many in my community that, that told my grandparents and me that number one, I'd never get in. Number two, I'd never get a scholarship. And number three, <laughs> even if I got in and got there, those girls were going to make mincemeat of me because they went to private schools and they came from money. And who was I, a little po girl? I was a big fish in a small pond in St. Louis. But when I got to Atlanta, they were going to make mincemeat of me. I don't know about you, but I love a challenge. Yeah. So it was surprising for me to get there. And I don't know what came out of me. One day I said, I'm a real spumming woman. And I swear to you, my freshman says, oh, that's precious. That's a real spumming woman. You don't even know what influence is because we, we hear influencers today, but that was an influence move. But that's how they referred to me. I actually didn't make line until my senior year. Wow. So junior, uh, my sophomore year, I wasn't accepted. Junior year, they didn't have a line. So senior year, I said, I'm going in. Uh, listen, listen, I'm uh, listen, <laughs> take me. But even if you don't want to take me, I'm going to make yeah. it hard for you not to. Yeah. I don't come from, I don't, I, I, I am a, I am creating my own legacy. So there mm -hmm. is no, we've never had anybody in the family go to college, but me. So wow. I would it. So when I was selected, I'm 33 HK01, blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah. And when I made it, it was such an amazing experience. So many girls came up to me like, oh my God, you're real. Yeah. And you didn't come from anything and you made it. And I was like, I was so, I'm still touched. People say that to me to this mm -hmm. day, you did everything and you did it the hard way, but you, you, you did it. Yeah. And so. Spelman was an amazing experience. I am proud to be a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, and I earned it. Yeah. And you, as you said, you have made your, made your way on one of my favorite shows, Shark Tank as well. So you <laughs> appeared on Shark Tank. I mean, my goodness. I mean, you have, who goes from Spelman to Shark Tank? <laughs> I bet who goes from Spelman to Georgetown to another law school and oh. then starts a company and then gets the Shark Tank. Not too many people, but there I you knew go. that was coming. I really knew. And it's yeah. funny. I, I'm big pictures. You know, some people are very detailed. Mm -hmm. That is not me. I'll, there's the goal. 50 cents said, get rich or die trying, this bitch will die trying. I'm yeah, going. yeah. And what do you love most about pitching? Because the pitch queen, I mean, you, you put this book out uh, this year. Talk to our viewers about the book, The Pitch Queen. Well, this book is my fourth book. And this book, I wanted to really share the stories of how I got here. So a lot of people know that four years ago, I walked out of homelessness and six years ago on my 44th birthday, they're just it's coming up. Uh, I almost took my life because I lost the love of my life. So many bad things happened, mm -hmm. but they only know those parts of my story that I had a bad childhood. What they never realized is when we wrote, well, when it came up to a woman's journey from poverty to purpose and profits, people didn't know I grew up in poverty. People didn't know the stories that gave me the purpose of being the killer pitch master. And then the profit off of the very things that people said that a black woman from the inner city with an accent could never do. And I did not profit it off of it. I only learned how to pitch just because my back was against the wall and to be able to teach people what comes so naturally to me, 
as great as that is, I wanted people to know that you can make every mistake in the book. You can date the wrong people. You can hang around the wrong people. But when you had that rock bottom and I was given a second chance at life, I wanted to make it count. Mm -hmm. And so when I sit on that throne, do know I paid the cost to be the boss yeah. and I battled everybody to get here. As we show in the picture of you sitting on that throne on the cover of your book. And that's impressive. I mean, that's intimidating. It's a boss move. See, how many siblings do you have? Where do you come from? I mean, who else in your family got this talent? I mean, come on, Precious. You got to share with your siblings or someone. Do you have a so lot I have I have three siblings. Okay. Two of them I know. My sister, uh, Lakeisha Coffey, and my sister, Ray Nicole Williams. Those are my two sisters. My mother and father still live in Missouri. I don't have a relationship with either one of them. My grandmother, you love me you would love my grandmother because my wow. grandmother was all that in a bag of chips i mean the hottest chick on the block in her yeah. city. come through and then my grandfather the elder statesman raymond woodrow williams i think growing up in st louis is probably why i'm so funny because i mean we went through hell yeah. so you got to make some you got to make people laugh you gotta yeah. you got to fight against everything to get out of it. and i clawed my way out of it but my grandmother told me when i was a little girl that i had the gift of speech yeah. and never knowing it the reason i got paddled Yes, I used to get corporal punishment in 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 in, mm -hmm. in um, elementary school. Is the very reason I make money and have an impact today. So you, they thought they were beating it out of me. Oh no no yeah, no! You, was, made, you made me much stronger. Yeah, they were certainly coaching you. And I was last time I see Rafael and Phil Donahue. I knew I was going to do that. I knew I was going to be a talk show host. I mm. knew I was going to be on TV, billboard in Times Square. I, I knew, and I only came to New York because I said until I have a billboard in Times Square, I cannot leave. That means mm. that that was like my thing that said I've made it. Yeah. Oh, we've had two now. So okay. <laughs> and no, you can get on those shows and still be me. I, like mm -hmm. I'm not. A, I'm not stick thin. Yeah. I, I, I did. I'm, listen, it's me. Yeah. Let's coach some people into 2023, Precious, the mm -hmm. killer pitch master. I mean, let's get people prepared. As you know, being on this podcast, I pitch folks. I'm saying, hey, can you come on? I'm arranging, you know, spots for that. And so for people that's maybe not a podcast host, but they may be working with a brand or, or a service for someone. I mean, what is one of those things that you would say that everyone needs to remember when they are pitching, regardless of who are they pitching to or what brand that they're pitching at? Well, number one, I think you really need to know who your audience is. So even if they're pitching to uh, like a podcaster, if they're pitching to someone in media, who are the, who are the people that are going to be listening? Who's the general, who's the end audience? Mm -hmm. What are you going to bring to the table that's different from everybody else? Because mm -hmm. if you sound like everybody else, you get treated like everybody else. Mm -hmm. Number two, if there is something that's so unique about you, you need to be the only choice that matters. So when you're writing to uh to be on someone's podcast or writing to someone in media. It's got to be short and sweet, but it's got to be impactful. Mm -hmm. So if you're showing us you're the only choice that matters, this should be able to come up in three to five sentences. You've, you've done your deal. You know who the audience is. You know what you bring to the table that is so different. You have the credibility, the talent, and the skill sets to be able to pull it off. And if you already have press, throw that in there too, because it makes you stand out. When I got into Forbes magazine, let me say it again. When I got in the Forbes, there you go. Me. They came to me. So when they wrote that first article, pitching this bitch, and I'm still stunned to this day that they put a curse word in the title of theirs. But they love my book because my first book is Bad Bitches and Power Pitches. They they couldn't get over how a 13 time national champion, a uh, black woman, could stand in her and stand in her power and not change the title because everybody else told her to. Mm -hmm. And to actually have the credibility and the, and the and the testimonials to be able to pull it off. And so when we had the conversation, when I had the conversation with Forbes and they put that out, I was stunned. Mm -hmm. And then you see it, Billboard in Times Square, and then you see companies buying my books in bulk. It's because I dared to do the impossible. I stood out as a full-figure diva who yeah. took the business world by storm and I won big. There you go. And how many people or how many pitches are there? I mean, is there just kind of one There's general pitch? Different well, there's six different types of pitches. You have your elevator, which you say at networking events, you, your media, which is pitching to you and, you know, whether it's uh, television, um, you know, all those. Mm -hmm. Then you have the investor pitch. So what is the money reside? Yeah. What is the money reside? So you want people to, to, to uh, give money to your company. It's investor pitch. Then you have your sales pitch. All of us should know about the sales pitch because you're always selling yourself on a daily basis. If you're a speaker, I ain't trying to speak for free. Mm -hmm. so why should they pay you you need to have an answer for that and you need to be able to separate yourself from every other speaker and then finally you have your interview pitch so a lot of us have been on interviews 
in the interview, you really are the only choice that matters. And if you keep saying whatever, about, I'm disciplined, mm -hmm. I'm a people person, everybody says that. Mm -hmm. What else are you going to say? And that's it, too. And I'm glad you brought that up, because when you think about interviews, that's essentially pitching. And we know that right. most people, if not all people are watching this, unless you own your own business, even if you own your own business, you're still qualifying your interviewing folks to find the best candidate. So even in the interview process, I'm glad you mentioned that that's like pitching. But do you think everyone needs a pitch? I believe everybody need a pitch. You might be <laughs> oh, you need a pitch. Think about the think about the parents. Why? 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 Well, everybody needs a pitch because you should be able to differentiate yourself from others. Number two, there's something special about you. And if mm. you don't say it, maybe people won't know it. Mm. I don't know about you, but when I walk down the street, can you see that um, that I went to Spelman? Do you have a law degree? Mm. Four-time bestseller, number Not one bestseller? Up. No, you can't because I'm black and most people think something totally different. Mm -hmm. But when I open my mouth, you better know it because I'm not gonna let you forget it, Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so whenever you're able to step up, you might sit next to somebody on a plane. Y'all just chopping it up. But there's always to be something in your mind. What do you want to leave them with? Yeah. When this conversation is over, do you want them to go look you up on LinkedIn or whatever social media platform? I'm a speaker. Every time I speak, people should be people should be trying to book me. When I get on that stage, four or five better be at the. When I leave off the stage, I, I'm collecting those next pay speaking engagements. Yeah, because. You have to add strategy, cutting, and precision to what it is that you do. So even if you're a young person, we all know everybody going for net internships, especially the paid ones. Mm -hmm. Why should they pay you over someone else? What do you bring to the table that's something that's so different, right? So everyone needs a pitch, especially a sales pitch, because you want to bait, attract, and close with ease. Every time you open your mouth, prospects should be throwing you money because you're going to turn them from a prospect to a client, a customer, to a repeat. And then what they're doing next, referring you. Yeah. And what y'all getting right now, let me just, just say it in the interim, what y'all getting right now, what you're watching and listening to, if you're riding, whatever, you're getting something for free. Passes that you should be <laughs> paid for, for these gigs. So you, you should probably have sent me an invoice for this whole conversation, <laughs> but I'm telling you <laughs> You are getting some real gems for free. I mean, really take these things in. It's not 30 minutes enough to ha have a conversation with Precious. So you certainly got to come back with season six, um, Miss Pitchmaster, and let come me on, know what's been up on. with you. But what you said also, what's unique and what stands out, and I'll just kind of use your award again as the 2022 Speaker of the Year for the Women's Business Award. I mean, shout out to you. I mean, what's next? I mean, because this is a nice way to end the year, would you say? So nice way to end the year. So the Perfect Pitch Academy is starting next year. And so, I, listen, can you imagine, people have been asking me this for years to be a part of, corporations have been asking, because, you know, I train sales teams at LinkedIn, Google, Microsoft, Federal Reserve Bank, you know, we can go on and on. You we know said how it do. before you came on. Yes, man. Listen, we do. But what I, <laughs> but what I love is individual, successful authors, speakers, and entrepreneurs have just like, Precious is great that you, you know, you create these pitches and you like your clients are winning and stuff like that. But we want to know at a longer time how to do that for ourselves. And if we can learn from the master, maybe we can add, add that to our repertoire. So the Perfect Pitch Academy is coming. Also, I'm a former attorney. And so uh, as this year is coming to a close, you'll be amazed how many law firms have reached out to me like, we know you're a former attorney, but the pitching that you're doing for them, yeah. what can you help us with, especially for our associates of color? So mm -hmm. our Rainmaking 101 from day one. I can't is wait. Doing next year. So just think nothing is lost and nothing is wasted. I mm -hmm. Just because I'm not an attorney, it took mm -hmm. me becoming an entrepreneur to understand rainmaking. So if mm -hmm. y'all like being worker bees, that's great. You can be replaced as the queen bee or the rainmaker. You bring the money in. They not letting you go. There you go. There you go. Once again, just some gems. Pitching you into 2023. New Year's is coming up. We got 48 hours before we drop this come bomb. Is he dropping on, these gems on, on us right on. now? We get, I mean, and bringing it with the full energy. And every week, um, Precious on the podcast, I do ask my Vanessa, which is you, that person that's finessing the game. And for sure, if you hadn't figured out by yes. now the reason why I chose Miss um, Williams to be on the podcast and to ring a new year, because, because she is someone definitely finessing the game. But Precious, as I ask my Vanessa each week, who's that person for you? Who's that person for you, Queen? The pitch master, the pitch queen, the killer pitch master. Who's that person for you that you say that's finesse in the game? Well, you know, our, our connection between a Sharon Monet Yay. to me is the ultimate finesse. If you think about it, when I came to her, I wasn't who I am today. Like I literally thought so low of myself because I walked out of darkness. And she's looking at me like, I wrote about you on CNN in 2015. Wow. 
You're like, where that book at? Now, you know, she's not that tall. I'm five nine. <laughs> but she like, where that book at? And I had the title and everything. And she's like, um, mm, we're going to work together two and a half months. And I'm thinking, I'm supposed to take a year to write. She's like, two and a half months. All right, all right. <laughs> that book changed my life. You hear people say that? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. It's a business book. Mm -hmm. So that meant the audience was going to be totally, it's not a compilation or anything like that. So it was one of those that it had to stand out. So the title had to stand out. But also I had to write about something from a totally different perspective. The Pitch Queen. Who would know? No, no, no. My first book, Bad Bitches and Power Pitches, which okay. led to The Pitch Queen. I've been okay. I just want people to know what book you're, refer you're referencing. That's all. Right. So the first book was Bad Bitches and Power Pitches. By the time we got to The Pitch Queen, I'm certified because of what she taught me. That first book got me from low place oh, wow. to no, she took me from last to first and every book we she told me we writing a book every year by the time this one was coming it was time to tell my story and the stories that people have never heard like the the people i dated that i met my low self like all the things that if you love tmz you're gonna love this book you'd be like <laughs> what? I just, I, I, yeah because i was ashamed i'm no longer ashamed mm -hmm. And the thing about success is that people are going to come out of the woodworks, coming out the closet. I'm like, come out the closet. I didn't wrote, I wrote about some of it. I'm going to keep writing about it. Like, welcome yeah. to the party, welcome right? Welcome, welcome, welcome to the party. But Sharon showed me how to take the mess of every part of my life and finesse the game using pitching as my weapon. Mm -hmm. It is my secret weapon. No one saw me coming. And so I shot all the way to the top. And my four books are now sold as the Fantastic Four to companies. She taught me that. Yeah. And from our first, did we ever think we would do what we did? I didn't. And look at what we did. She gave me my life back, but she also put respect on my name. There you go. Yeah. And we did show a clip uh, a moment ago about that. You know, she definitely told you how to put some respect on your name. And when you gave that testimony on this uh, celebration of authors that we did uh, early part of this year, and, and that's what I say. I mean, really, she really does challenge you. And make sure that you are standing the best and make sure that everything, a piece of property you own is secure. I think she the edge to her mind, too. She might snatch the edge. I'm not going to lie to you. She, might, she be talking to me like this. Whatever you say, I'm not even going to. I don't want the smoke. I do not Shout want Shout out to smoke. Philly. I tell her, she in Florida, but she brings the Philly energy. She do. And I'm from St. Louis. I'm the STF. I'm show me state. But I had to be like, very yeah. few, first, first of all, very few people challenge me. So if you're yeah. going to challenge me, I better respect you. Mm hmm or you just got to be gone. I respected her so much. Look what she did for me. Yeah. If she can't, if she can finesse someone low and bring them up, and and, and now I'm finessing the game by by the things she taught me. I already had an arsenal. She made my art. Listen, yeah, she definitely pulled it out of you. She by giving you the, I also want to say, my grandmother ahead. and Michael Jackson, like Michael Jackson and my grandmother are deceased. But we would talk about excellence. Look, like I look at Michael Jackson and you can watch this stuff today and still be amazed. Mm -hmm. His dancing, his singing. I look at my grandmother who had an eighth grade education and I feel like she gave birth to me wow. because she has so many dreams and she knew I could do it. And she knew she wouldn't live long enough, but she knew. And every time I speak, one of my clients made a big blow up picture and she's right there. She said, I'm always going to be there. And yeah. she and then, and, and you, I, I don't know if this is the answer to the question, but what is one of those things um, that or life lessons that she has always told you or, or told, taught you that you've always kind of held on to? One of the life lessons she taught me is that not everybody's going to like you, baby, mm. but the ones that do are the ones you focus on. That's mad important. And she told me, like she told her kids, she said, I could teach Precious how to cook and clean. She'll have people doing that for her. Because Oprah's going to know her name. That's dope. And she does. So, mm -hmm. you know, my grandmother. That is, is dope. My grandmother's an amazing woman. And she's that is dope. life into me. Mm, that is dope. That is dope. And I want you with one last thing. Again, y'all got to follow her. In a minute, she'll give it all away. And that way you'll be able to book her for this stuff. Because she's giving it to you once again for free. The lady, thank you once again, Queen, for doing this, uh, for joining me on this episode. But what's one of those things that you will leave with someone what's one of those words of advice or encouragement that you will leave someone that you want them to go into 2023 remembering or holding on to i usually say fortune favors the bold and now i feel like heavy is the crown mm -hmm. so if you're gonna wear this crown it's gonna be heavy and you're ready
Every mm. battle you face has prepared you for this moment. To go from the killer pitch master to the pitch queen was 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 difficult. But heavy is the crown that I wear. But I fought every battle to get here. And so will you. I love that. I love that. And with that being said, we're not going to get you out of here. But one more thing and just another thing I also do each and every week on the podcast is that I'm sniffing through your social media pages of my finesses because I'm trying to figure out what's going on over here or a status that you posted. What did that mean? So elaborate on it. So I'm going to show you in your case, I found a picture on your social media page. So I want you to tell me and my viewers as I show this picture, what's this all about? Where were you and what was all going on? You ready? Yeah. It had an OnlyFans link to it, too. I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding. He was like, the... you didn't deny it. I, I deny, <laughs> I deny, I deny. They say no. Okay. <laughs> no, here we go. Here's the photo. Okay. <gasps> I'm next 2022 is an event planners conference in Las Vegas. And that is at Escalator Pitch, something we created for our IMEX 2022. And so people were coming down an escalator and I would teach about, I do a primer on pitching. And one of those women to the side of me, she took me up on the challenge. She gave her first pitch. We went up the escalator and back down. And in the <laughs> time I, I recreated her pitch. She sat, she sat and she gave it again. People were trying to get, trying to get cars from her. The first one she did, nobody cared about. Mm -hmm. And I said, that is the power of a pitch. When she first did it, it. The second time she did it, now y'all all in her face. That is the power of pitching. It can take you from first, from last to first. Now you got people wanting you. you and go. that's how it was done. And I took that picture. First of all, I'm in, I'm in Vegas. I'm at the Mandalay Bay. And I slayed. And that led to many more paid speaking engagements. Yeah. And I'm black on both sides doing it. Come on now. Yeah. We're in my African print. And here's one of the other things that I see that I know you do this intentionally. Or maybe if you don't, then keep on doing it. But this expression in this also photo is what I live for. Yeah, there it is. That is a staple. That is what's unique. You don't even have to open your mouth. In fact, I need to maybe even create a logo for you. You just should have almost like a caricature of what that face looked like because it's, it's really trans parent not transparent it's uh what's the word i'm looking for it you can feel it that's what i'm saying you, you can certainly can. feel the energy i don't know what's going on in this particular photo but every photo i see you in you make that face is I that do. intentional it, though it it is one to show people who said i couldn't i would never be on stage again look at me now yeah. i'm getting paper and impact what number two i'm smiling because the second chance that god gave me I'm making use of my talents. Yeah. And number three, why can't I smile? Yeah. Because I did it. Yeah. And you continuing to do it. And you're a Midwest girl. Who's your Everybody top three hip hop artists? Who is your top three hip hop artists? Ooh, you went there. Um, well, I'm definitely going to say Nicki Minaj. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to say Jay-Z because I've always loved Encore. I, yeah. I you know, you me miss all of those. Number three. Ooh, that's. I'm gonna say Cardi B because Cardi you got down yeah. nine times, but I get up. Too. Yeah, but do you like some of nostalgic hip hop? Because when I oh, listen to course. you, why do you think I love? It's the most beautiful list thing in this yeah. world, just yeah. like that. Because like, I, don't, in you. Come on. I don't know if you listen to like Michael Eric Dyson, but every time he speaks, a prolific speaker, I mean, profound. Every time he speaks, he rapping some kind of you know rap lyric, and I'm like, I get that from you. You you're not seeing you on this well, I show. Think hip hop. If you're a rapper, you think you are the greatest no song on the radio. You just in your mind, you walk yeah. in like I got it. You. Like, is. I challenge you, Jay Z. Yeah. And that's how I when I was growing up, I said, I don't care who you put me on stage with, I'm slicing and dicing. I don't care if you got more followers, more fans, more money. Take it from me. <laughs> take it from me. I'm taking that crumb. I'm gonna snatch that that chain because this is mine. Yeah. And I'm still hungry. Yeah. That's what makes me different. I'm still yeah. hungry. I yeah. love to prove it on stage. It's a lot of food out there for you, too. It's a I'm lot hungry. of food, aka opportunities out there. It's a lot of food and opportunities food. out there. And I'm, I'm going to always, that off of you. always um, press this, continue to support you and have your back and then have your back on also this podcast. And I would love for you to come back and co host. Oh, shoot. I would love that. You that know what I'm saying? That See, I'm going to make people laugh. You'll be like, get off. <laughs> Your get information off. is already below, but let people know, um, Precious, how they can support you. And again, or maybe keep their eyes on what's coming next. 
Okay. Again, everybody, I'm Precious Williams, Pro Founder and CEO of Perfect Pitches by Precious. You can uh, check me out on LinkedIn under Precious L. Williams, Killer Pitch Master. Please connect. Do not follow. Please connect and tell me that you saw me here uh, on Facebook. I'm at Perfect Pitch P. On Twitter, I'm at Perfect Pitch P. And on Instagram, I'm at Perfect Pitches P. My website is www.perfect pitches by precious.com you can also check me out on youtube perfect pitches by precious and we're switching over to perfectpitchgroup.com so keep checking out we got some big things popping there you go bringing that energy i can't wait happy new year in advance for 48 hours miss harris but williams thank you so much for joining the podcast happy new year queen what's your new year's plans what you doing? I'm trying to chill and eat some good food. I'm trying to eat the hot. Listen, I'm trying to do that fine dining on the roof. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, that's what's not in New York. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Precious, the killer pitch master joining me again. Y'all make sure y'all support this queen literally sitting on the crown, holding it down and giving you this free gym. So make sure you support her and book her for an event. Book her in your city. Bring her out. She's definitely not a waste of time. So again, oh. thank you guys for joining me on this episode of the Finesse Media Podcast. I'm your host, Ken Finesse Media. Happy New Year, and I'll see you in 2023. What a year. What a year. There she is, the killer pitch master, Kelly, Miss Lady, Precious Williams. Thanks so much for joining. Thank you. This has been another edition of the Finesse Media Podcast. Join us again next week for the latest news from HBCUs. Special guests.